Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm currently a second year life sciences student studying at the National University of Singapore. Today will be a pretty chill video in that I'll be talking about my journey as a pre-vet student as well as to give some tips that might be helpful to those that will walk in the same path as me in the future. Or it might even benefit some of uh, you pre-vet students out there who are in other schools as well. Uh, I've got my cup of water here and let's get into it. Okay, so what is the Concurrent Degree Program? The Concurrent Degree Program is basically a collaboration between the National University of Singapore and the University of Melbourne. And what this program is all about is that basically, you need to spend about one and a half years studying life sciences at the National University of Singapore first, before moving on to the University of Melbourne to study for your Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. In addition, during the course of your study in NUS, there are certain conditions that you need to fulfill as well. Uh, one of them being that you need to maintain a 4.0 GPA out of 5. And that your second modules have 3 times more weightage than your first year modules. Additionally, at the end of your third semester, you need to take the CASPER test as well, which is basically a situational judgement test that will put you through uh, numerous tough scenarios and you need to respond in a way that shows that you have good empathy and also good communication skills. So um, where I am right now, basically I just finished my uh, third semester at NUS and next week uh, I'll have to sit for my situational judgement test. Thereafter, uh, my next semester will be spent studying the first year of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Melbourne. So applying for the concurrent degree program is actually quite similar to applying for uh, your vet schools as well. Just like any other applications, you need to submit your resume, your results, as well as a personal statement explaining why you want to join this program. This is also followed by an interview and during the course of my interview, I felt as though they mainly wanted to find out how committed I was to the program and whether I could handle the stress since the program um, has a very high workload. So for, uh, as for tips, I would think that you need to have at least 80 hours of experience with animals to show that you have had a long-standing interest with uh, working with animals. And you also need to include any experience that demonstrates that you have been interested in this particular uh, field for a very long time. For me, for instance, when I was really young, about maybe 11 or 12 years old, I actually started this uh, neighborhood group neighborhood group with my friends. Uh, basically what we did was we patrolled the neighborhood uh, searching for any abandoned animals and we also fed stray animals uh, along the way. So when I applied for this program, I actually attached uh, the name of the group into my resume to show that I had an interest in the veterinary industry and helping animals since I was 12. Another tip would be to have a clear reason of why you want to be a vet. So this would mean reading up about the field and having a rough idea on what you would like to do once you graduate from the program. So in the first semester, this coincided with the COVID-19 outbreak. So numerous measure, restriction measures were in place. As such, I actually spent this semester at home studying. And during this semester, I overloaded by one module. So maybe to provide some background information, all guys in Singapore have to spend two years serving national service once they complete high school. As such, when I left national service, I felt as though my brain became really slow. And because of that, when I stepped into university, the workload really hit me like a truck. So I initially felt really anxious and did not know what to do. So this was actually aggravated when I attended lectures and I saw how 
my fellow peers were asking questions that I couldn't even think of. I felt as though I was really falling behind the crowd. And this really accumulated until one day I decided that enough was enough. I decided to write a letter to myself in, to, in five years and when I was writing the letter, I decided to dump all of my feelings and emotions in there. Uh, once I was done writing the letter, I resolved to find ways to mitigate my stress so that I could better handle my workload. And one thing that I found to have really helped was to actually let go of the high expectations that I had towards myself. And I actually mentioned this in a previous video, so uh, do check it out if you are interested. And I actually found it really strange how to do better, you must learn to not care about doing well in the first place. It's a bit paradoxical. So in the second semester, I overloaded by two modules. Even though this semester was the most hectic, I felt that I actually had the most fun during this period. So why is that so? I felt that this was partly because I learned to let go of the high expectations on myself. As such, I realized that actually uh, there was some joy to be had in learning new stuff and to explore what uh, the world was offering in terms of um, knowledge. And during this period of time, uh, COVID restrictions were actually lifting. So I actually spent about two or three days a week studying at school. And somehow being able to hang out with people once more actually felt really good and I felt less stressed out as a result. During this semester, I actually took a module called Animal Behavior and also a module called Biodiversity. And these two modules actually involved a lot of hands-on practicals and field trips where we actually went out to look at the I don't know man, wild animals and plants in action. So for example, for our animal behavior module, we actually did a project where we researched on monkey behavior. So what happened during this project was that we had to frequently go to MacRitchie Reservoir to film and to observe how the monkeys behaved over there as part of our research project. So I felt as though uh, Having these periods of time uh, outside of school in nature actually was pretty relaxing and a lot of my stress was uh, reduced because of these mini field trips. Oh and there was also a crazy period of time when we realized that we had to submit our project one week after recess week which is a break allocated by the school to allow us to study for our midterm exams. And because we had to submit the project the week after recess week, we ended up spending the entire uh, week, exam week after recess week, carrying out our research project, which means to say that every day we basically go to school, uh, sit for our exams, before proceeding on to MacRitchie Reservoir to carry out our research for the remaining half of the day. This period of time was actually the most stressful because we had to juggle between our exams and also uh, our research project. And even though workload during this period of time was really stressful, I felt as though uh, I was having a lot of fun because doing research at, in nature actually took my mind off studies for a while. And I actually, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but yeah, it was enjoyable. <laughs> this was also the semester where I began to pursue my other interests as well and realized that by pursuing other interests that were outside of my studies, you actually end up doing better during exams because somehow your mind feels as though your entire life is not just all about studying. And I actually did something really crazy during this period. So I actually had an upcoming exam the next week, but I chose to attend an, an eight hour workshop on shelter medicine the weekend before my exam. Even though attending this workshop meant that I had lesser time to study, I actually ended up performing really well for the exam. And I think it could have been attributable to um, reduce stress spent doing what I love doing, which is basically learning about animals 
and how to help them. During the summer break, I decided to take my internship as a module in order to reduce my workload for the third semester. And what this means is that basically, I did projects while writing reflections in order to digest what I have learned during the course of the day. And I believe that if you are an NUS student with a very high workload due to, I don't know, maybe participating in the same program as me, you should definitely consider doing this as well during your summer break or to perhaps take online modules such as edX or Coursera in order to reduce your workload. However, if you are not a student in NUS, you should also consider maybe finding out whether your university provides options like this as well because I feel that they really help to reduce the workload and their workload is not that high also. Because I took the internship as a module during summer break, uh, I only overloaded by one module during the third semester. And because of how hectic my second semester was, the third semester felt much slower as a result. And during this semester, I actually battled with a really huge enemy and that was procrastination. So why did this only become a problem in the third semester? Well, the third, during the third semester, I took more public health modules and also a lab module. And these modules are actually more project and uh, assignment oriented. As such, I had a lot of essays and projects to do. And because of how the nature of assignments and projects in that their workload is pretty big and that there is a set, set deadline that often feels very far off when they first assign you the project. Uh, there is this constant urge to procrastinate and to not do anything until the very last minute. So this is what many of us um, experience and because of that I managed to identify it really early on as well because of the experiences of my seniors. So it was also during this period of time that I decided to you know try to break my project down into many mini um, assignments and to set multiple mini deadlines for them. And basically this was how I tackled assignments and projects. During this semester, I also had to clear my coding requirements and I found that I really struggled with this part because coding is a skill in itself and for you to try to learn how to code in within like 13 weeks was pretty challenging, I would say. And also as part of my requirements to finish this module, I actually had to code an application as a final project. And it was during this period that I felt pretty stressed. Uh, yeah, because first of all, my, I felt as though I had no coding skills, like little to no coding skills at all, even after undergoing all of those lectures. And also secondly, because I had to deal with other exams and assignments as well during this period of time. But nevertheless, I managed to finish it in time. So here is another tip for all of you, is that if you are going to study a course that involves coding, make sure you learn a little bit of coding ahead of time so the learning curve won't be so steep for you. And also, you should find ways to beat procrastination that best suits you. So this was basically how my pre-vet journey at NUS went. If you guys have any questions, do feel free to drop them in the comment below and I hope to be able to answer them in future chit chat sessions like this. And yeah, so stay awesome and see you in future videos. Peace! Basically, this was basically 